You're back live with us tonight, Taki on In Focus, and thanks for staying on. Minister in the Presidency, Monty Kungubele, says President Sir Ramaphosa is well within his rights to speak less on the Palapala farm robbery. Kungubele says Ramaphosa could unintentionally implicate himself as investigations on the matter are ongoing. While there are growing calls from the opposition for Ramaphosa to shed more light on the February 2020 burglary, the minister says the president has already subjected himself to law enforcement authorities. Speaker of the National Assembly, Nosi Vyoma Pisang Nakula, has confirmed that uh, Ramaphosa will return to Parliament to give more answers. This follows the question and answer session on Tuesday in which opposition MPs demanded answers about the burglary and the alleged concealing of crime. But Minister Kungubele says the session was a lost opportunity. Parliament is going to just debate Ken. Parliament is going to just cast aspersions on the president, which are not going to be casted. When Parliament has got an alternative, a more useful alternative of the panel that is independent, which is going to produce possibly top judges in the country who have got a track record of independence in adjudication and Parliament, once that work is done, Parliament will receive a report of something that is a product of testing a lot of evidence out of the table. This thing that happened in Parliament, it's just grandstanding, which is going to lead nowhere. But you would have cast aspersions on the president, which are not going to be tested, which are not going to be tested against anything. To get reaction to that and to elaborate on the outcomes of uh, today's deliberation is UDM Chief Whip, Baba Yomzi Guamkwamshikas. Good evening and thank you very much for your time and uh, for joining us uh, tonight uh, here on In Focus. Let's start with your response to what the presidency uh, is saying. The presidency is saying the uh, Q&A session was a lost opportunity. There was just a lot of grandstanding, which ultimately was just casting aspersions on the president. Now, who created that situation? That's the first question you must ask. If President Ramaphosa had answered the question, I don't think what happened yesterday would have happened. We would, we would have asked follow-up follow -up questions on the basis of his uh, response. It's because of his initial response where he said that he was not willing to answer the question. I don't understand. I don't know how people can then expect us to uh, take Parliament, an institution that is supposed to hold the executive to account, seriously if we have... We have we must contend to accept and answer a response from the president that says, I'm not going to answer the question. Then what's the point of having a question and answer session in parliament to which you, you, we are supposed to hold the executive to account? I mean, Minister Gungubele, I listened to the insert. I mean, he's, he's just being mischievous. There are various mechanisms that parliament has designed or developed in order to hold the executive to account. The section 989 process is just one of them. It doesn't mean that because you are going to appear or you are going to undergo a certain process in Parliament, you must not respect the process, the one that you are undergoing currently. The President went to Parliament to answer questions in terms of our rules. We are supposed to appear once per quarter. And the reason why he seems to be appearing twice this quarter is because he didn't appear last time because of an oversight or a mistake or a deliberate attempt by the ANC and not for, to, to allow the president not to appear in parliament last time. We had to insist on that to happen. That's why it happened yesterday. But also, it's, it's absolutely preposterous, Tibus, for people to suggest that a legal opinion, I don't care whether it's obtained from your senior counsel or what, can trump the constitution and the constitutional responsibility that the, the president has. He has a constitutional obligation to answer in parliament. It is only when a matter is sub judicare that we can't probe him further. The matter is not in a court of law. So on what basis then does it, is he refusing to answer that question in Parliament? We are going to bring him back to Parliament for as long as he needs to come back to Parliament up until we get the answers we want. You can't have a Parliament where people can just simply, members of the executive can such simply go to Parliament and say, I'm not going to answer the question, and then we leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Or that they respond to questions without answering questions. Then it, 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 it makes a mockery of the parliamentary process and of the role that Parliament is supposed to play in holding the executive to account. Is the President making a mockery of the process? I mean, when he says, the response, by the way, from the President was, the question that was posed asked whether 
he considered it prudent to take the nation into his confidence on the serious allegations surrounding his Palapala farm by accounting to the people of South Africa and speaking on the specified issue in the National Assembly. The president responded that he stands ready to take the nation into his confidence and that he would do so through due legal and parliamentary processes. He says, I answered, you asked me, is, am I ready to take the nation into the confidence? I said, yes. I'm ready to take the nation into confidence due the necessary parliamentary processes and legal processes. And the strange part is that he was answering that question via uh, the very same parliamentary process that we've put in place in order to hold him to account. He is really trying to, to avoid answering this question. He is hoping, uh, uh, probably, that the ANC is hoping that once the panel of uh, experts has been selected, remember the Speaker has discretionary authority over who's going to actually end up constituting that panel, uh, that panel of experts to actually look into the evidence. He's probably hoping that pro that process is, uh, is going to be taken completely away from uh, from the very same political parties and that or that process will not find that there's a, a, a credible reasons for the impeachment process to proceed. If they think that, then they must think again because... Uh, we are preparing ourselves to ensure that politically, we ensure that that process is robust, every piece, piece of information is considered properly, and that ultimately the politicians are supposed to decide whether to impeach another politician, make that decision at the end of the day. But do, do, you, have reason, do, you, have reason, do you have reason to believe while we're there that the panel, uh, at least the names that have been uh, proposed, the likes of Judge Musenek, I think uh, Justice Khampepe is also uh, making a, 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 an appearance in that lineup, are, are less than sufficiently independent to carry no, out no. this process? No, 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 no. The point we're making is that we're not saying, we're not questioning the credibility of the people who have been nominated. We're saying ultimately it is still up to the Speaker to exercise the discretion and decide out of those who the three, the final three, are going to be at the end of the process. We are going to constitute that panel. I'm saying we don't know. Now we don't have a full picture of who has been nominated, the total picture of who has been nominated. I am sure that co correspondence or communication will be made available in due course by Parliament, and the process will be outlined as to how we are going to arrive at that decision. But the point I'm making is, he is they are probably ho hoping that they'll be able to manipulate or influence that process when it is there. Hence the failure and the refusal to answer a, a simple question in Parliament where you're supposed to answer a question. The only time you can't answer a question in Parliament is when the matter is sub judicial because we can't deal with it when it's in front of a court of law. Right. If you remember correctly, even the, the motion of no confidence story, it was uh, when, when the ATM filed the motion of no confidence and they said their matter was in court. It was taken off because they said the matter was not subject to care at the time when the decision was made to schedule it on the program. So there must be consistency in how we deal with matters. So uh, the argument by the president that he, he might as well be within his rights not to, to fully uh, uh, disclose particular information with the uh, fear that he might unintentionally you know, incriminate himself while there are all sorts of uh, processes well, you can that are going on. Tim, was you can't incriminate yourself when you're telling the truth. You only, uh, at times, you are only afraid of incriminating yourself if you know that you are telling half-truths and then you need a, a legal opinion and legal people and legal minds to help you to actually police and sanitize some of the aspects of the lies so that they appear to be the truth. If the president was telling the truth, he would have no reason to hide behind legal niceties. He would actually come to parliament and be upfront and say, look, this is what happened. This is how we can uh, tackle this process and how we can deal with it going forward. He can even acknowledge some some of the mistakes we made. That's what we want to hear. That's what taking the nation into your confidence means. It means that you are you take the na nation into your confidence in, in, with the uh, entirety of the aspects of what uh, of the issues that surround the saga. He can't uh, decide to nitpick what he wants to respond to, as he was doing on ANC platforms. Yeah. We want him to account in Parliament and not for him to go and talk to the Integrity Commission and other people, but not talk to the, to, to the institution that has been put in place to hold him to account in particular. The, the, the presidency, in essence, the, the ANC, arguing that, uh, that's just grandstanding on the part of the political parties. You're doing that just to serve your own political experience, your own political interests. It's, 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 it's got nothing to do with the really getting to uh, to, to, to any form of truth. You're just casting aspersions. How do you rebut that? 
No, it's absolute nonsense. I mean, they accused us of the same thing during the Zuma years, and they only woke up in 2018 after we told them since 2009 that there were problems with the style of leadership of former President Zuma. The ANC is doing exactly what it always does. They always close ranks around their presidents or leaders and protected them at all costs, even when their actions are actually violating the law or undermining our, our constitutional democracy. Oversight is the purview of the opposition. We are not here to mollycoddle the ANC. We will do whatever it takes to make sure that we get to the bottom of the of the saga. Remember, you will recall, I mean, he, when it comes to even the Reserve Bank, the president is not accounted to the Reserve Bank. He keeps on missing deadlines and shifting goalposts until he's under pressure. So what truth is he talking about? Because if he had the truth and wanted to share that information, he would have shared that information with the relevant bodies and authorities in South Africa. That hasn't happened. He keeps on shifting the goalposts. When it comes to Parliament, he refers to institutions to which he has not accounted as if he's complying with those processes, when in fact he's doing the opposite. So he's just buying time. So what has been the agreement then with the Chief Whips? Because I believe there's been a, a whole challenge around uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call, synchronizing of your, of your diaries with the diaries of the President. And there's a whole thing of whether or not the President should cancel everything on his diary and prioritize this thing. He created this mess. We expect the president to come to parliament and account because the question was live at the time the, the sitting was adjourned. Remember, the sitting, the session was suspended, and when it was suspended, we expected to have a clear way forward along the lines of what was proposed by Honorable Shivambu, supported by all the opposition parties, including the ANC at the time. So we supported, we expected when we had a meeting yesterday in the Chief of Suram to discuss a date modalities of how the president and when the president would possibly come back to parliament. We are not going to entertain uh, stories where we are going to be told that the president is busy. He created the mess. He, must, he made this bed. He must lie in it. If he had answered the question yesterday, or the day before yesterday rather, if he had answered the question competently and provided a proper response, an answer to it, we would not be sitting here today. I think we'd, have, we'd be having a completely different discussion altogether. So, so as so, soon but, as but, possible, but, but, what we want the argument, before you, 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 you tell me what's going to happen now, the argument that what could not be answered in the allocated time could have been answered in, in, in a written form, did you canvass that within the Chief Whip's no, no, no. operations? Yeah? Remember, we're dealing with uh, two separate matters. We're dealing with question number five. Question number five was still live at the time when the session was adjourned. Right. So we're saying continue with that question. The rules then say that if the session expires and you hadn't gotten to the question, then it must be responded to in a written reply format. In other words, question six, we said it's all right. You can, you can respond to question or answer question six uh, with a written response. But question five was still live at the time when the session was adjourned. The norm is you wait for the question to be finished and for all the follow-up questions to be asked before you can adjourn a session because the time has expired. So that is where the problem started because then it left us in the wilderness, if you like, and now we have to find a way of navigating ourselves out of that wilderness, out of that uh, situation where we don't, the uh, rules don't provide for it. The president is partly responsible. In fact, he is responsible for that. And, uh, and I would also suggest... Uh, and admit that perhaps even the presiding officer is also partly responsible for that problem. So we have to find a way of navigating ourselves out of that wilderness. What is that way? And what, what's the way forward? No, no, no. The way forward is we said, for example, today uh, that then there will be a motion in the name of the chief cook of the majority party explaining the motion will explain this whole situation, which will then lead to a process where we have a question session in parliament. But Ultimately, is that I'm sure you've, you've heard in the media as well that the Speaker did make a commitment to the Programming Committee that she will write to the President of the country working together with the leader of government business as well as the, the councillor to the President to get a date uh, where the President can actually come back to Parliament to answer question five. I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for coming on. That's the chief with there uh, of uh, the UDM.